Hi, I'm Daz. Um, something you haven't seen me with before, a Roberts radio. This one is an RFM3. I don't really know a lot about it, but I know that they were made from the 80s through to the 90s, and there's two different versions. I have no idea what this one is. It's been sitting on my shelf for a very long time. Um, I think I might have bought it from a radio rally, so... Um, there was a note attached to it that I'd put that said it had a very low volume, so that's all I know. So uh, perhaps I shall power it up again and see if that's still the uh, case. I think that serial number means this is the older version with two ICs in it, but uh, I'm not sure. Look at the state of it. I've got a feeling this has been a bit damp. Hopefully it isn't full of woodworm. Right, let's see what happens when we apply power. Well, the volume control is quite noisy. And it isn't very loud. That's maximum volume. Let's try FM. So it's not particularly loud on all wave bands, so I suppose that tells us something. Um, two different demodulators, but it could still be a problem with the IC, I guess. Right. How do you get it to bits? So, I'm not sure what a quick release fastener is, but I can't see one, but there is a screw either side of the handle, there's a screw on the aerial that I've got to remove, and two screws holding the uh, external power supply jack, and also remove the terminals to the loudspeaker, which seems to be loose. The brackets are quite rusty, so it's not surprising, is it? Well, I faithfully followed the instructions. Um, I'm using an ERT service chart, that's what I have here, uh, 2544. So that's the Naked Radio. So yes, it is. it does contain two ICs. So I understand this um, is an IF stage, and it's also got the oscillator for medium and long wave. And uh, there's a pair of transistors up here which do the RF front end for FM and the mixer and oscillator. So, four semiconductors, mostly. Um, TDA 820M, yes, I remember that well. I've not uh, used one of those for many, many years. Oh, quite an old design, I guess. So I guess this radio was probably built in the 80s. Um, so, uh, yes. That's the ferret rod. A very large tuning capacitor. So just looking at the block diagrams, the fat rod does go to IC1, the FMRF output goes to IC1 as well. It's got some ceramic filters as well as some IF cores, the looks of it. So then that goes to the volume control and then to IC2. Power supply, the 9 volt goes to the audio amplifier chip through the um, through a dropper resistor here and a decoupling capacitor to the RF circuit. So low volume could be capacitors around the audio amplifier um, have reduced in value. Um, could be that the power supply to the IC is low, although it does seem to be picking up stations. Um, okay, so this is the dropper resistor for the RF stage, so 9 volts on one end, the other end is 5.5 volts on medium wave, and VHF it's 5.59. Now the diagram says 6 or 6.7, so that seems a bit odd, so is that resistor high resistance or is there additional loading on the radio? Um, why it is uh, a bit lower than specified. A quick look at the output stage. It uses TDA820M, uh, 18 transistors, 1.2 watts at 9 volts at 8 ohms. But depending on the internal resistance of the battery, I, I doubt you'd quite reach that. Good reason why there's a thousand microfarad decoupling capacitors. When the internal resistance of these batteries increases as they age, you need to uh, keep the impedance lives, you'll get motor boating. So, 
basically power's fed straight into the IC. Um, looking at the output stage, we've got an 8 ohm speaker, we've got a Zobel network, which is a sort of impedance stabilisation device, and they, they seem to be very much used on um, ICs. We've obviously got a coupling capacitor because this is a class AB stage and it's sitting at about 4.4 volts, as you'd expect, about halfway. There's a frequency compensation capacitor feeding back, that's to roll off the high frequency response because you don't want it responding to any stray radio signals that are on here because these amplifiers have got quite a wide bandwidth. Um, the gain setting is done here by the 56 ohm resistor and the 10 microfarad capacitor and I notice it's got an impedance of 159 ohms at 100 hertz so it's already at 100 hertz starting to roll the bass off because obviously you don't want 20, 30 hertz, 40 hertz on a small radio like this because the speaker can't reproduce it anyway so it's just a waste of electricity and battery power. Again on the input to it, um, you can see there's 47k here, coupling capacitor and then to the pot there's 100 nanofarad and that's 1.5k at 1 kilohertz and 15.9k at 100 hertz so again you're starting, this is starting to roll off the base through this uh, 47k pot. I believe it is, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is 47k. Apologies, I got that wrong. But um, the bootstrap I always find interesting because it's just a resistor and a decoupling capacitor to the positive of all the driving transistors. Yeah, there's a ripple rejection capacitor fitted. I don't think that's that necessary unless you're running on the mains but this has got an external input hasn't it so but yeah the TDA 20 you know I think it came out in the early 70s so I remember seeing it in magazines then um, so it's quite an old chip by now uh, if this was made in the late 80s so uh, but yeah it can give 1.2 watts as we said so it's, it's quite quite a, um, a powerful chip considering it's only in an 8 pin package but it does simplify the design of the radio, you've got to admit, and uh, it probably, with its 18 transistors inside, probably works better than a standard 4 transistor output stage um, in this case. So uh, anyway, that's the audio output stage of the RFM3. I also note this sounds a bit tinny, which tends to suggest it might be a capacitor, but anyway, pin 1 should be 0.7, it's not too far wrong. Uh, pin 2, 0.6, that's not far wrong, pin 3 should be ground, yep, so there's nothing leaking into there, 4 should be 0, 5 should be the output stage, so that should be halfway, yep, looks good, 6 should be 9, which is 7.8.7 .7. near enough I guess and pin 8 5.5 that's got a bootstrap capacitor on it yeah about that so uh, hmm okay so those voltages are okay the receiver voltage is slightly low be easier just to completely recap it but uh, a bit more fun doing this isn't it so looking for further clues pin 2 of the IC is used to set the gain there's a resistor and a capacitor to ground I just happened to notice that there's uh, see if it'll focus there's a lot of muck around that capacitor and that is the gain setting capacitor. So I'm going to cheat a bit and use a ESR meter and see what happens. Well, it's slightly out of the picture, but it says greater than 20 ohms. So we may have found the problem. Well, let's try a substitute capacitor across it. There we go, so that's where the fault lied. <laughs> well, secondly, what's it? Mm. 
I must say that's uh, significantly increased the base. Um, there was definitely a smell of electrolyte when I removed that capacitor so I had to clean uh, the circuit board as well. Before I started to uh, walk on this I could have looked at a YouTube video and probably got a lot of clues but I thought it would be more fun just to go straight into it. Clueless. Well I am clueless. These are Telecon capacitors. It's interesting because the rest of the capacitors actually have got quite a low ESR so uh, interesting. It might be interesting to locate uh, capacitor 34 and change that because that's the smoothing capacitor um, I think on the power supply. I don't know if there's any others. Um, yes, there's another one on the FM. It's capacitor 36, but it's only 10 microfarad. Might be worth changing that and seeing if that voltage um, through the 330 ohm resistor rises. Well, I've recapped all the RS stage, and interestingly, there's a lot of difference in that voltage being supplied to the IC. Interesting. The 330 ohm resistor is 330. Um, so why it's drawing slightly more current than this data sheet suggests, but maybe it's wrong. <laughs> I'll say this is quite a sensitive radio. Anyway, I've recapped the whole lot. Um, there is signs of electrolyte leakage. It's mostly the 10 microfarad capacitors. Um, the buttons are getting stuck. I suspect there's lubricant underneath the release bar underneath, so a bit of lubricant on that, I guess, will fix that. I need to remember to put some uh, uh, this fader lube stuff into the pot because that's still a bit noisy. I guess I want to have a go at taking it apart and cleaning it because it is quite dirty. Um, but uh, yeah, well, I was hoping this would be a nice, simple repair. Because uh, everything I've tackled recently has been quite complicated. And this is the first Roberts radio I have worked on. Um, so uh, I've popped my uh, Roberts uh, virginity there. You can't help thinking this radio has got very damp at one stage, can't you? Yeah, it's like rust on it. Oh, I like that. That's nice and simple design. The tuning scale. Just looking at the uh, ceramic uh, filters in here, this is the 10.7 and it's been driven by this um, tune circuit here. These have a low impedance, I think it's about 300 ohms, so you need a step down transformer to drive them. And I, there's L10 which drives the 455 one for the AM band, that's for the FM. And that's the discriminator coil and the idea of that is to um, give you a, a second oscillator that's 90 degrees out of phase to enable demodulation from how I understand it. Um, it cuts down the amount of tuned circuits for sure by using the filters and of course you've got a predefined um, band pass so it does cut down on the amount of circuitry in here. Give me switches are clean with contact cleaner I have managed to work it in and I've put a bit of lubricant on this bar at the bottom here that uh, releases these and they seem to operate a lot better. I also found that the two screws holding the banking were loose as well. So not a lot to do. Pot of course has been done so I think that's all I have to do really. Well I think that's all I'm going to do to it. I was considering whether I need to make a quick adjustment on the um, quadrant detector but I don't think so. FM sounds clear enough to me so I'll pop it back in its box and just enjoy it. You know, I, I just like sometimes just to quickly get something to go and uh, that's it really. Um, and then try and enjoy it. You know, the the medium wave and the long, uh, long wave bands are not going to be there much longer, I don't think. And also FM eventually will go. They're talking about internet only, aren't they? For the public service broadcasters. I'm talking in December 2022 at the moment. So... It'd just be nice if I can get some of these radios working so I can enjoy them a bit um, while there's still real transmissions to um, enjoy them with. Very satisfying click when that pushes back in, so just put my aerial screw back in, put this uh, external power supply back in, wires back on the speaker. Interestingly, uh, if I remember rightly, it's black is positive, so that's uh, kind of interesting, isn't it? I'm not sure whether that colour, but... Uh, very snug fit this battery isn't it? Um, I assume you do this. Oh, yes. 
My goodness, that's tight, isn't it? Oh. There we go. Right, there we go. My first vintage Roberts radio. I do like this turntable for rotating the ferret rod. That's very good. Well, let's see how sensitive it is. Long wave. Photo of the yeah, quite sensitive. <laughs> the local station. It sounds first the more, like lots of Yes, having an IC definitely makes a difference in the sensitivity, I can see that. There's quite a few stations pulled in there on medium wave you don't normally hear. Let's see what it's like on FM. All the nationals. It's an opt out. Or As you can see, I don't have many FM stations here. Let's try it on a transmitter. nice reproduction for the size because the speaker is quite small um, there is a little bit of bass there so yeah I, I quite like the Roberts it's my first vintage Roberts so yeah I like it I I have a couple of Roberts around the house but they're more modern things with internet streaming or a DABs but um, yeah I can see why people uh, quite like them but uh, as I said there's plenty of people on YouTube that do Robert's stuff so um, it's not something I'm going to make a habit of. I have an RT22 which I'm probably going to have a look at as well but I don't think that's actually got any thoughts on it so uh, anyway. Anyway thanks for watching um, I'll see you soon for the next video don't know what it'll be there's plenty of things that are half done maybe I'll finish something off